Hello, beautiful people. So in this video, I'm going to talk to you about how to know whether somebody has avoidant attachment issues, or maybe they're just not that into you. And in fact, I'm going to break this down into three categories. There are people who have avoidant attachment issues, and you might be seeing things come up that look like avoidant attachment issues. Another category is somebody who doesn't have avoidant attachment issues, but there are other things about them, such as personality characteristics, that make you think maybe they have avoidant attachment issues. And then there's a third category with somebody who is securely attached, somebody they maybe they are good in relationships, and yet unfortunately they're just not showing that much interest in you, and you're wondering is this behavior avoidant attachment? So I'm going to break these down and explain how you can tell the difference between these three scenarios. And the reason for this is because in our Dealing with an Avoidant Partner Facebook group, we had this post that said, sometimes it's not avoidant attachment. Sometimes they're just not that into you and there's a big difference. And several of you asked for an explanation. Rather than type it out, I just wanted to hop on here and give you an explanation. And before I go on, I'm, I'm going to explain all of that. Before I go on, I just want to say who I am. My name is Daniel Robertson. Uh, I am an attorney turned relationship coach. The best way to reach me is through my Facebook profile. I'm also on Instagram. And uh, this is, we have a free group called Dealing with an Avoidant Partner. You're welcome to come join our free group. It's a support group. It's an awesome community. It's growing every single day. More people are coming into the group. And so many people are giving me feedback that they find it so awesome and supportive that they have a community of people who are dealing with difficulty in their relationship, possibly because their partner has avoidant attachment issues, how painful that is for them, and then some strategies and some tools and support to understand how they can better show up in their relationship and how they can find more fulfillment in their relationship. One other thing that I'll tell you about is I'm also the host of the Courageous Love Community. This is a paid membership community, and it's a very small, close-knit community. And in the Courageous Love Community, we, teach, we are teaching and learning how to get the love that we want. So if you're somebody who's had to work really hard for love in the past, and you don't want to work so hard, or you've just found it really challenging and difficult, then the Courageous Love Community is for you. And how do you get the love that you want? There's two things you need. One is self-love, loving yourself, healing your past hurts, uh, learning how to love and care and regulate your own emotions. And the other aspect is um, excellent relationship skills, such as communication, conflict resolution, these kinds of things that you need for success in your relationship. So if you put those two things together, you can get the love that you want. Uh, without having to work so hard for it, without finding it so difficult. So that's what uh, is available, and as well as just other kinds of coaching, individual and couples coaching. Find me on Facebook if you have more questions about that. I take, uh, I will take your private messages. Send me a private message, and I'm happy to chat with you. Okay, now getting into the answer to your question. How do you know whether somebody has an avoidant attachment style, or whether they have some kind of um, other personality characteristics that might look like avoidance, or maybe they're just not that interested. So how do we know the difference? Okay, first off, let's talk about attachment styles because they're very popular right now. There's a lot of talk about attachment styles and they are very helpful. It's very helpful to understand attachment styles so that we can understand the things that are coming up in our relationships and the dynamics. However, they don't explain everything, and a lot of things that come up in a relationship don't have anything to do with attachment. So what is an attachment style? Well, if somebody has avoidant attachment style, then one of the things that you're going to see is they had childhood experiences that included attachment injuries. And for and somebody who's more avoidant, the attachment injuries might have looked like neglect. It might have looked like dismissal of the validity of their own emotions especially if somebody was more sensitive and their emotions were dismissed as a child. Maybe there wasn't a safe space in their family that created to just really express emotions and really have emotions validated. And this lack, this, this unmet need that they had caused them to become very independent, 
uh, caused them to not trust people to meet their emotions, caused them to feel that it wasn't safe to express their emotions or safe to feel their emotions because maybe that was modeled for them by their caregivers when they were growing up. So these kinds of attachment injuries are going to show up in the past for somebody who has a more uh, more of an avoidant attachment style. And that kind of attachment injury is what has caused them to be hyper-independent. It's what's caused them to feel uncomfortable even talking about or expressing emotions. And maybe they've built up walls and guards around their heart to protect themselves. They're not going to express emotions because in the past they were hurt and they're going to protect themselves, not let anybody too close because they learned they couldn't trust in the first place. So that's where there's going to be an origin story, an attachment wound as an origin that's going to show up as avoidant attachment. Now, what if somebody doesn't have an attachment injury like that? Well, then we're talking about possibly talking about somebody in the other two categories. So the one of the things you're looking for, if you're thinking it's avoidant attachment, is you're looking for that early attachment um, injury. Uh, another thing that you'll see, if somebody's really avoidantly attached, you'll see it consistently, right? It's not going to change, right? So if you've got somebody who maybe personality-wise, they're not that into relationships in general, um, but sometimes they're a little bit closer and sometimes they're less, maybe it's more of a personality thing and not really avoidance. Um, another thing about avoidant attachment is that theoretically avoidant attachment could change through therapy, right? Because if it's an attachment injury, then we could theoretically work on it and heal it. And then they might become less avoidantly attached, maybe more secure. Usually the chances of somebody who's avoidantly attached doing that are are kind of low because usually somebody with avoidant attachment isn't comfortable, uh, isn't motivated and isn't comfortable expressing their emotions and going into therapy to work on these things. They're still so guarded that they don't want to pursue that. But if they were motivated, they could work on it and become less avoidantly attached. And would you see them go all the way to secure? Would you see them go all the way to being like anxious and and really like clingy in relationships? Probably never going to see something like that from somebody who's a dismissive avoidant. Um, there might be another category if somebody's more of a fearful avoidant or disorganized that would be a different category but we're talking about dismissive avoidant attachment style in this video um another thing that will happen with somebody who's who's um more ha- more has an avoidant attachment style is if you try to get close to them or you try to push in to get uh, you know, emotional connection from them or get them to express their emotions, they're probably going to react in an angry way or they might react like um, a scared animal that's backed into a corner, like a little badger is like, whoa, don't, you're threatening me. You're threatening me by asking me for emotional closeness. So they're going to respond with anger. They're going to respond possibly by lashing out or criticizing you're going to see these kinds of things show up in a dismissive avoidant attachment. So those are some of the things to look for when a, there's also something you see in breakups. And before I I go on, I forgot to mention early on, I wanted to mention a lot of these things that I've learned. I've learned from Dr. Samantha Rodman. So I really want to give her credit uh, for a lot of the information that I've learned here. Dr. Samantha Rodman uh, has, has, has been the source for this. So she deserves credit. And um, in a breakup, if you have somebody who's more of an avoidant attachment, uh, who has more of that avoidant attachment style, then in a breakup, what will happen is if you break up with them, it will probably trigger their abandonment wound, their fear of abandonment, their fear of rejection. And they might suddenly freak out. They might suddenly try to get back close into the relationship, all of a sudden, now that it's a breakup, they care. So it's like you've been asking them, asking them, asking them for emotional closeness. They've been pushing you away, pushing you away, pushing you away. And now you break up with them. And then all of a sudden they're like, oh, no, 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 I'll change. I'll change. I'll change. And then maybe temporarily they change and you see it, you see a change and then it doesn't last, right? It doesn't last for very long because they haven't really worked on their core attachment wound you just triggered their fear of abandonment. So they reach back in all of a sudden. 
this is what you might see in um, you know an avoidant attachment style scenario, right? Versus somebody who just isn't that into relationships. So let's talk about that as another category. The second category would be people who don't have this avoidant attachment style, but maybe they have other variables or characteristics that are making you think that maybe they have avoidant attachment. So in this second category, you've got people who, let's say, let's say they're just hyper independent. Maybe that's just their personality. So you're, you don't really see avoidant attachment injuries. You don't see attachment injuries in their childhood. You can't really like, where did this come from? Their family seems okay with emotions. And, you know, it's like anybody who has children, like I've got four kids myself. And so if you've been around children or you have children yourself, you know that some children are just like more, they just, they're, they're cuddly. They want closeness. They want to be there. They want they always want reassurance. Other kids are just more independent. And that's just how they are. They don't, they don't want you to be all over them. They don't want you to snuggle them all the time. And there's no attachment injury there. It's a personality characteristic that's like built into them genetically. And so they're not somebody who personality-wise is that interested in closeness. They want to be more independent. They like it. Another thing you might see is more of... Um, uh, more of like high sensation seeking activity. So if this is somebody who's like really into extreme sports, they just like getting out. They're they're very energetic. They want to go out. They they don't want to settle down and and be domestic. They want to go out. They don't want to they don't want to sit around and cuddle because they're getting bored, right? So that could be something. Um, they may maybe they just have a low need for physical touch, like we just talked about. Um, Maybe they just don't like psychology. They don't like introspection. They don't like emotions. They don't. They just don't care about all that stuff. And it doesn't mean that it came from an attachment wound. It just means they just they're just not that interested in that stuff. And that and that's um, you know part of their personality. Maybe they're hyper rational. Maybe there's somebody like an engineer who is just more in their head. And they're just not really emotional. I mean, I mean, of course, they have emotions, but they're more interested in rational thought than they are in just emotional expression. Um, and these are all, you know, personality variables, right? That have nothing to do with attachment injuries and, and attachment styles. And um, maybe it could be it could be maturity level. Maybe you've got somebody, so we talked about personality characteristics. Well, what about, per, what about maturity level? Maybe maturity-wise, they're just not showing up that much. Maybe they're, they're more self-centered, so they're more focused on themselves and what makes themselves happy, and they're not that interested in making sure somebody else is happy, so they're not that interested in giving a lot in a relationship, and it's just kind of maturity level. And uh, maybe there's somebody who likes to play games or likes to play video games. Not, not everybody who likes to play video games is immature, but these are kind of some variables that we might see. It's like, okay, there's multiple things going on here. This is a person who's avoiding responsibility in general. Maybe they're not highly ambitious to go pursue a lot more for their life because they're just immature. They just want to have more fun. They just want to do things that feel good to them. So these kind of immaturity things are showing up and you're thinking, is that avoidant attachment? Maybe not. Maybe it's just a maturity level thing. A another category could be just like neurodivergence. Maybe it's something in their brain. What if they have ADHD and they want to do certain things? They want to show up in a certain way in the relationship or, or carry out certain tasks. But because of their brain and the way their brain is wired, they're not able to carry it out fully. And so it's maybe it's ADHD or some form of neurodivergence that is showing up and preventing them from really connecting in the way that you're trying to look for connection. So it doesn't mean that it's avoidant attachment, but it's something else preventing connection. And um, by the way, everything that I'm talking about, I can I can relate to on my own personal levels in some ways, in some ways. Um, and so none of these things are like bad things. None of these things, except for if you're immature, you want to work on developing your maturity because you'll be more successful and happier in your life. But none of these things are bad things. I'm not making any moral judgments here. 
These are just personality characteristics, maturity level, uh, brain wiring characteristics that could show up in a relationship and seem like more of like an avoidant attachment thing, but it's not avoidant attachment. So what else? If somebody is in this category where it's not avoidant attachment, then they might not be consistently avoidant. You might see them, well, they seem close sometimes, but not close other times. And you're like, what's, what's going on? And maybe so for one example, if you're somebody who's more anxiously attached or if their partner is somebody who's more anxiously attached and tries to cling to them, and they're somebody who's just not that into relationships because they don't like settling down and snuggling and holding hands and talking about feelings. They like to go out and travel and do things or build a business or, or they like to have their alone time so they can play video games or whatever it is, then um, you try to, you, you bring a lot of anxiety and they're not used to the anxiety that could cause them to push away so they could act in more of an avoidant way. Or if you're trying to be really clingy and you're trying to cuddle with them all the time and you're not giving them the space that they want, that could cause them to kind of push away and back away. And that would be something that it's not avoidant attachment. It's their response to being presented with somebody who wants more closeness in the relationship when they just don't want more closeness. So they're pushing away. They're, they're responding to the anxiety, the anxiousness, the neuroticism, the clinginess, and they're kind of pulling away from that. Um, so that would be another thing that could show up. Or they're not consistently avoidant in other ways. You might see them uh, potentially a little bit closer with other people, and it depends on the dynamics of the specific relationship. Um, this one, whereas theoretically avoidant attachment could change because it could be healed, this one's harder to change because this is somebody's personality that we're talking about. And if it's in their genetics, it's going to be harder to change this. As, or if it's in their brain wiring, it's, it's potentially going to be harder to change this. Although, although with ADHD or neurodivergence, there are things you can, you can work with experts uh, and doctors to see what you can do to change. But if we're talking about genetics and we're talking about personality, yeah, you can change a little bit, you know, if, if you've studied the field of epigenetics and yeah, we can change um, to an extent if you work really hard at it. But what if the person doesn't want to change? And are they going to want to work really hard to change their personality if, if they're happy in general with who they are? And they're not, they're not feeling, they're not experiencing a lot of pain in their life because they like their personality and it's not coming from some past wound. It's just their genetics. So they're, they're happy. They're happy to go snowboarding on the weekend or go, you know, do something, go drive ATVs or whatever they like to do or go travel and see new places and try new foods because they're, they're happy like that. So it's going to be harder to change somebody in this category who just has these personality characteristics that are that are uh, more, more of an independent type of person. Um, whereas we talked about with the avoidantly attached person, if you try to get emotionally close to them, they might get scared, they might be afraid, they might react in anger like an animal trapped in a corner. Somebody who more of their personality uh, is showing up, it's showing up as, as this like kind of distance or standoffishness they're going to be more kind of perplexed, like, why do you want to be so close? Because they don't experience wanting that type of closeness. So they might be a little bit perplexed and kind of standoffish and kind of like create some distance, but they're not angry and they're not fearful about it. And then whereas the avoidant attachment person might be more likely to stay stuck in this dynamic and if you break up with them, uh, they're, they might temporarily freak out and have their fear of abandonment triggered and, and lean back into the relationship and try to cling back onto the relationship temporarily. Somebody who's more of just personality wise doesn't really like close relationships and they don't really need a lot of that physical touch and closeness. Um, they might be more okay. They might be okay. If you break up with them, you're like, yeah, you know, I understand. Yeah. I, I really, I couldn't meet your needs. I understand. And I, I agree with you, you know, it's best that we break up. They might be more like that if you go through um, a breakup. And, I, and again, a lot of the stuff that I'm talking about, I've learned from Dr. Samantha Rodman. So I, I need to credit her with a lot of these um, topics that I'm, that I'm talking about right now. So 
they might be more okay with the breakup. Now, I think the the last category, this will be the quickest to talk about. Um, and in the last category, we're talking about somebody who is more securely attached and maybe they are good in relationships, but they're not showing a lot of interest in you. And so you're starting to wonder, well, are they avoidantly attached? Because how come I'm offering them all this love, all this kindness, and they're not, they're not leaning in and accepting it? Well, this person, you're going to notice maybe either they're the type of person who didn't have the attachment injuries to begin with, or they had attachment injuries, but they did a lot of work and earned their secure attachment status and style. So they do feel securely attached. You'll notice they have good relationships with other people. Maybe they're okay. Maybe they're emotionally expressive to a moderate or high degree. Um, maybe they you know, have been close with other people and you can see that. You see maybe their family dynamics might look a little healthier. And... Um, and maybe they even like closeness. Maybe they even like the physical touch. Maybe they even like relationships and they do. Maybe they are, are you've seen them be good in relationships and be close and make, and people feel connected with them, but they're not connecting with you for some reason. And that could be because, unfortunately, it could be because they're just not that interested in you. And, and that's okay. It's not everybody is a match for one another. Not everybody has the attraction or the chemistry that they're looking for or the spark or the same compatibility, you know, and you can see you're like, but it could be, it could be, yes, it, it could be, but not everybody has that. So it could be that they're just not that interested in you, even though they are securely attached. And because they're showing, they're, sho they're not showing interest in you, um, that it, you're wondering, are they, are they avoidant? And, and in that category that we're talking about, no, they're not avoidant. And maybe it doesn't even have anything to do with you. Maybe they're just at a point in their life where a relationship isn't a priority for them. So that could be another thing. It's, it has nothing to do with you. It's just a relationship isn't a priority. And it can hurt. It can feel frustrating. Notice this about all three categories. All three categories. Is this somebody who you want to be in a relationship with? And, and part of you is like, oh, yeah, well, if they have avoidant attachment, then, yeah, because they could heal that attachment. I could just love them until they heal that attachment, and then you could be with them. And, yes, I understand that you, you want that, but um, does that really sound like somebody who's going to be fun to be with when they freak out and get angry and criticize you when you ask for uh, emotional connection? And is that going to be funny? Do you, I mean, fun for you, is that going to be somebody you want to take on the work of loving them into healing their attachment style? Because most of the time it doesn't work. Nobody likes to be changed and nobody likes to be forced to face their wounds that they don't want to face because it hurts like hell for them. And so they don't want you to push them to do that. So does that sound like a fun relationship for you? Does that sound like something you want? And then let's talk about the second category. If you're somebody who wants closeness and who wants somebody who's going to be close with you and spend lots of time with you, do you want somebody who's hyper-independent and likes to go travel and likes their alone time and isn't that into relationships? Or maybe they're less mature or whatever else is going on. Is that somebody who you want to be with? And then the third category, yes, I know you see so much potential because they seem like so wonderful because they're secure and they communicate and they, they are capable of emotional connection, but they're not interested in you. And you're like, but, but if they would only be, then we could have this great relationship, and you can see that, but they're not interested in you. Do you want to be with somebody who's not interested in you? Because you could, you have the choice. There are people, there are people who will be interested in you if you're willing to put in the work to look for that. And if you don't know how to look for that, I totally understand. It can be really challenging. If you if your only access to other people right now are the dating apps, then yeah, it can look like it really sucks. It can, it can be really hard to find somebody who's a good match. And I understand. And if that's your situation, you're just trying to look for somebody and, and you're struggling, um, and maybe some of this other stuff is getting in the way, 
I'd be happy to chat with you. You know, I'd be happy to chat with you and work through what's getting in your way so that you can find the relationship and the love that you want instead of chasing somebody who's not not able to show up for you, who's emotionally not available to you. You deserve somebody who's going to love you and connect with you and show up the way you want. Now, that's provided that you are also showing up for them with love and kindness and compassion and patience and connection as well, and that you're giving to them as well. But Mm -hmm. if you're watching this video, my guess is that you are showing up that way. And if you are showing up as the loving, compassionate, connected, kind person who I know that you are, then um, yes, you deserve that in return. So if you're having trouble getting it, then then message me, send me a private message, and we can work through what are the obstacles getting in your way, and we can talk about what we need to accomplish in order to get you to where you want to go. So I hope this video was really helpful to you in understanding the difference between when somebody has avoidant attachment, when somebody has a personality style that's just more independent and not that into relationships, and when somebody actually just isn't that into you. And I hope you remember, I hope you remember that you are worth it, you're worth it, and you can have the love that you want if something's getting in the way, um, you, we, can, we can overcome those obstacles, and I'm here to help you with that, and every single one of you, I want to recognize you for your courage, you are a courageous lover, and I know that because I know that you've been hurt in the past, and that you're still showing up and keeping an open heart, and that makes you courageous, and never forget that you're a courageous lover, and if you are a courageous lover, you deserve courageous love in return. So I hope this video is helpful. Um, contact me, leave me a comment, send me a private message just to say, hey, the video was great, and I just want to let you know I found it really helpful, and um, I'm so glad that we had a chance to connect, and I hope to hear from you. Have a beautiful day.